Hola, buenas. Mi nombre es Mercedes Young y soy la presidenta de la Cámara de Comercio Hispana de la Bahía de Tampa Bay. Y hoy vamos a estar hablando sobre un tema que casi nunca queremos hablar. We're going to be talking about the subject and the part of business that most people don't want to talk about. And I have the perfect person here for it. So the first thing that I would like to invite you guys to please go to the website, www.tampahispanicchamber.com. And please find what we are doing as a chamber and how we are supporting the community that we love dearly. And also you may call 813-867-3550. I did it. Yes. And we no more do. Let me introduce you to Mr. Max Bomar. Would you please introduce yourself and tell us the name of your company? Good evening. Um, name is Max Bomar. Company name is MNG General Total Services. Um, direct cell number is 813-380-2880. And our website is www.mg-cleaningservices.com. So tell us a little bit about what you do before we really get into the the meat and potatoes of this conversation that I'm really excited about. Tell us what your company does. Basically, m and is, um, is a janitorial company. We focus on the private sector and commercial cleaning within the school district, um, Hillsborough County, airports, private banks, and we try to partner up with other diverse companies to expand and grow the business. In addition to that, we also do um, final cleaning, which is pre- and post-construction cleanup with numerous GCs throughout the county. Yes, I know that some of your clients have been the airport. What are some of the other things that maybe we don't even realize that it is MNG company that does it. I remember coming from another country, traveling back, and we were talking, and I think your company has the janitorial contract for the airport, right? That is correct. So they are the ones that make sure that our airport is one of the top airports in the nation because it's clean. But to correct, Flagship is the company that actually currently has a, the contract with uh -huh. Tampa International Airport. The contract that M&G has is with Crystal Paper Mover. We maintain and make sure the trains are actually clean on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. So when our, when our passengers come through the airport, mm -hmm. they come through a clean facility and also a clean train as well. Okay, that's awesome. That is very important. But Max, I will tell you that I am very glad that you were not only open to come and have this podcast as a member of the chamber, and also for many, many reasons. One, because a lot of people think that only Hispanics can be part of this chamber. And I always tell people Hispanics and brown, we are brown. Brown is brown. So we are part of the brown community. So if you can tell us so far what has been your experience with the chamber as a chamber member, I know that you came to one of the events. So if you can just share briefly, please. Being a chamber member will give you the exposure and the experience to actually diversify with other businesses within the community. Mm -hmm. uh, within the Spanish community, within the minority community, they focus on collaborating you to help your company grow and expand. Mm -hmm. Throughout, throughout the, not only within the Hillsborough County, within Pasco and, and abroad. As well. Yes. And one of the things that I, 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 the reason why I ask you that question is because a lot of times I know we want to stay with just people that we know, like, and trust. But the chamber, I know for myself, for my experience as the leader, this chamber focuses on quality service. The word minority is given to us, and there is that. But what we do is we do quality service. And that's what makes us strong as a chamber. And I know that you were very impressed with that luncheon that you came by. And it was it was amazing. And we have one more luncheon left for this year. And we're going to have a speed network on August 17th. That I will hope to see you guys there. But Max was open to have the difficult conversations. Yes. And we are going to talk about company finances. How? Tell me part of your growing pains, because I think that's when the financial conversations take place. So the growing pains that M&G had is having cash flow. Mm -hmm. Because once you get a water contract, you have to focus on paying your employees, paying that taxes and insurance on a quarterly basis, that monthly direct to the partner of revenue. If you do not have that cash flow to sustain and keep your company afloat, it will hurt your business overall. Yes. Um, so what I have done years ago is actually make sure I focus on myself and fix my own personal credit because your personal credit is a guarantee or directly to the business. Mm -hmm. And by me doing that, um, I was able to actually go out there, get a small loan mm -hmm. directly at a, at a credit union mm -hmm. and be able to pay that on a timely matter. Make sure you're never late. Definitely mm -hmm. on a timely matter to keep the credit so um, worthy. And at that point in time, I was able to actually go out and get an SBA loan directly for, for financing. Oh, okay. Okay, great. So, and, and we have a couple of banks that are members of the chamber that they do classes and they support us. And sometimes I think it's to get to the place 
that you are loan trustworthy. How you position yourself, that's what I'm hearing you say, that you make sure that your personal credit was in place and make sure that you made your payments on time. That does not mean it wasn't with sacrifice some of the times. Probably you didn't get paid to make sure that everybody else got paid. Well, huh, that's a good question, Mercedes. Mm -hmm. Because the first couple of years of being a business owner, I was fo mostly focusing on paying my employees, mm -hmm. paying those taxes, paying the, home, the insurance to the business. Mm -hmm. It took me a good maybe three and a half to four years before I started paying myself. Mm -hmm. In order for me to pivot to the next level. And mm -hmm. grow. And, and, and this is some of the things that we do have to realize that Max is not an exception to the rule. No. It's most of us yes. when we start our businesses. And uh, the, But how did you uh, overcome, at least like to get you SBA loan? Were you guided by a banker, somebody that actually taught you how to position yourself? Just tell me a little bit about that experience. The way I position myself as a business owner and also an entrepreneur, you would definitely have to have a CPA firm backing you up. Having the right CPA would help tremendously. It would actually be able to put your books in order, uh, make sure your finances are in order, and also they will guide you regarding proper, proper credit worthiness. Mm -hmm. And once your books are in order and your finances are in order, it, it makes it a less challenging to go out there and actually get financing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <clears throat> you know, one of the things that a lot of times when, when we hear CPA, we think it might cost thousands of dollars. You, well, we both know because we use the same CPA yes. that was not even $200 a month. No, it was not. Not even $200 a month running construction, running janitorial. Really, it, it is the conversation to have. And just you feel welcome to call the chamber at 813 965. 813, I was getting my personal phone number. 813-867-3550. And we can support you with that. But really, it's, it's, Less than what you will spend a month going to a restaurant. Exactly. Really. You spend more money on that than a daily buying Starbucks. That is true. That is true. To pay for a CPA. And it's definitely a, a, an expense that should be added onto your... Onto your... Now, when, what was that contract that took you... Because, you know, it's that contract. We want that big contract. What was that contract that took you to the financial conversation? Um, the, that contract took me to financial conversations was four and a half, almost five years ago when MEG was partnering up with the prime at the Tampa National Airport during phase one, when they were building the contract facility and I actually had to get additional financing to be able to support and cover payroll. Um, not only that, I had to pay payroll on a weekly, also on a bi-weekly basis. And supposedly that contract was supposed to last six to eight months and up lasting a whole year. So I had employees working sometimes eight hours a day, seven days a week, and I had to fulfill and make sure my employees are getting paid weekly instead of bi-weekly. And for the audience, which are business owners, after 40 hours, it gets pretty steep. After 40 hours, it, yes. It gets steep it's because you overtime. talk. Overtime. Yes, that overtime. That overtime is a beast because the law here is overtime weekends or holidays is time and a half. And you can have an employee making $15 an hour. Now that same employee has 40 hours at $15 an hour. And it has 20 hours at what? 20. Once it's over 40 hours, you have to times that by 1.5%. And basically at $20, that if let's just say if it's $18 an hour, that $18 an hour will go up to approximately anywhere between $24 to $26 an hour. Correct. Times that by 20 hours on top of the regular. On top of the regular 40 hours. Yes. Correct. So so it really, and then at the end of the year, when you get your audit with the workers comp, then that increases too, because you are using more people for more hours. Right. And the law with workers comp does not have a respect to person or respect to business. So what will be the advice that you will give to business owners to grow? One of the advice I give business owners to grow regarding workers comp. Yes. Safety, safety, safety. Train your employees. Make sure they stay safe on the job site at all times. By you doing that, you keep a low mod rate. By you having a low mod rate, that would lower your monthly, if not annual premium when it comes to your workers comp. Correct. And you know, it's amazing because a lot of pe times when people think workers comp, they think in construction. Not necessarily. Everything, restaurant, everything. If you have an employee that works at a laundry mat and it was pulled in a basket and it slipped and fall. I, it, I mean, it's just getting clothes out of a dryer, really. 
just anything, any business, any business, just the secretary coming out of the car and it's raining and decided to run to get to the door, not to get the hair wet and slip and fall. I always tell people, please don't roll when it rains. Like, please don't roll when it rains. It's just, I'd rather you be soaking wet than, you know, that. I agree. And, and it's, it's just those, they will take nothing but that. But one thing I'll definitely suggest, Mercedes, all businesses should definitely have a safety manual and actually have safely meetings, if not on a monthly, on a quarterly basis with the employees. Yeah. Make sure they fully understand the safety guidelines mm -hmm. on the job site. And not only keeping the business, protecting the business, also protecting the consumers and the employees as well. One of the things that I know for what you do and for what, what my company does, that we have what is called the OSHA 10, O-S-H-A number 10. And they can take that class online. And just like it says, OSHA 10 is 10 hours. They can take it on the phone. They can take it in any device. And it's the best $45 you would ever spend because it's going to give you a certificate that your employee, everybody took the OSHA 10 class, which lower your insurance. And your work is gone. Your work is gone. Yes. Correct. But not only that, it saves life because people realize how simple and how mindful they have to be when they are working because it can be a janitorial job. That, you know, it's amazing the other day. I was going out of an office and a young man came with a mop in the bucket, in a yellow industrial bucket full of water. He picked up the mop and you slammed all the water on the floor. And the other person was a business owner, just like me. And we were like, oh my God, you're going to fall. And, and I said to her, that's not your employee. Stop it. Stop it. That's not your employee. But we're feeling it as business owners. What is he doing? But that's a lack of training. Yes. That is a lack of training. That was to drain that mop thoroughly. Make sure there's no water in there when you put on the floor. floor. Yeah. I mean, well, it was amazing because we were having a conversation and what caught our attention was the water splash sound. So we turned around we're like, oh my God, what is he doing? It makes it more difficult to mop up. Yes. And it takes a lot longer for it to dry. Absolutely. But now he is with, with slippery uh, tennis shoes, a wet floor on tile. I mean, come on. Safety first. Safety first. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that, that was just one of those things that I'm like, oh my God. So what have you learned in, the, in this conversation can go forever with this question. What have you learned through the journey? Let me just start with just one angle, how to handle your staff. Let's, and then we will touch different areas because there is. How to handle your staff. Yes. Um, because there is a Monday somewhere. <laughs> it's always a Monday because you continue. So you were dealing with multiple, multiple, multiple personalities yes. when you deal with employees, mm -hmm. you have to be able to actually pivot, meaning actually you have to be able to put the right people together to work together and okay, yes. the individual shift, um, employees that are eager to learn, you'll be able to put them with another employee. That's not so eager to learn. They'll be able to train them and mold them into the culture of the organization. Correct. So that we have a full understanding what the expectations are based on the scope of work and going back to safety and make sure things are getting done accordingly. Yes. Day. And wow, you touch on something very interesting, the culture of a company. You can walk into a restaurant, you can walk into a business, into a department store and feel the energy of the culture of the place. I remember that I was invited to a Dillard's um, outlet. I had never been at a Dillard's outlet. When you go to Dillard's, you have all the ladies helping you with the makeup, the colognes, the shoes, and you know, you get the wine and dine. And I went to this place and it was just racks and racks and racks of things. And the employees were just picking up stuff from the floor and putting it away, nobody helping anybody. And I remember saying, I don't like this place. The culture is just too messy. It was, and just like that, any place has a culture. So when you are in the janitorial business, for example, I know that you have teams that come to the, the service schedule for it. So being very mindful, like you say, put an eager person with somebody who's not so, because if you put two heads, you do know what we call that. We call that a must <laughs> <laughs> together. So, but just to create, to know how to train that leader. So that leader will lead the culture, like an extension of you. That is correct. Right? It's like the Chick-fil-A model. Mm -hmm. If you're not there as an owner, you want to make sure the business still continue to perform if you're not there. Yes. yes. And that's how you'll be able to grow and pivot, go to the next level. Instead of working in the business, you're working on your business. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. and, and be hands-on or at least create programs, pr processing procedures that will carry on even when you are not there. 
Because when you get to the number where you are now, the capacity to where you are, you can be there for all of the interviews. Like I remember back in the days when you were like, you were there interviewing everybody. Now you have a manager. Now you have a person that has to get the essence of you and how you want to portray, portray the culture of your company to know what people to bring. I remember once that we were, were dealing with something and, and somebody was working at a particular school that was not really the right suit for that. And it was a private school and you kind of had to move things around. And I remember that you put that person to work at um, a fire department, uh, a, a fire station, fire fire, station. To fire station. You, I mean, you have to just, like we say in business, you have to put the right people on the right seat of the bus. I agree. I agree. In addition to that, besides the culture, the employees, you have to actually, they have to fully understand and engage mm -hmm. within the organization. They have to see the vision of the company where it's going. Mm -hmm. So that way I, I will have them on a quarterly meeting with all of my, with all the employees. So that way they have a full understanding expectation where the company is headed mm -hmm. based on the goals, um, the strength of the, the, where the company is going based on number of contracts and how the company is going to pivot going forward and actually paying your employees as well. The right hourly rate is crucial. Yes. How do you manage that? How do you calculate that? Um, based on the performer that we utilize when we actually bid on contracts, we put, we factor in, okay, this is the hourly rate we're going to pay each employee based on performance level. And based and you also have to factor in your CPI and actually ask for an increase on a year to year basis. Because basically what I had to do is actually go back to the client and ask for an increase mm -hmm. and showing and proving, okay, this is where the, this is where we are today. This is where we need to be in order for us to continue to grow with, within the organization also with, with, um, with, with the, uh, with the client as well. Yes. Because I mean, I mean, my God, materials, everything after the pandemic, the logistics challenge that we went through as the world, now, not just here as the world that we went through a major logistic change. The prices went up and they have not going back. They have not going back down. So when you bid at a project that it was that you maybe bid it to to charge the client thirty dollars an hour and you calculated your hourly rate for your employee and your materials and your profit margin and now three years later, the same materials that was a dollar a gallon now is three dollars. You cannot keep that price. So that's right. So so yes. I agree. Um, what you can do is actually go back to the client and ask for an adjustment in price. Mm -hmm. The majority of the time, they will work with you. You we'll said it. The majority of the time, time there is percentage, percentage that they will work with you. But when they work with you, it's based on that CPI at that time. So if the CPI is over seven and a half to eight percent, that gives you that additional margin in order for you to get a little bit more cash flow into the contract. But if the CPI is reducing. You are where you are with your numbers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is a good way to put it. You are where you are with your numbers. Now, one of the things that is is, is really interesting that um, that I'm just going to plug in real quick. With the Chamber, if you want to become a member, just go to www.tampahispanichamber.com. And I will tell you one of the things that you will find. We have in a cohort. They have two classes left called Avanzar. And one of the Chamber members privileges or you know part of the benefits of being a chamber member is that you get to call the uh, the office and you get to be part of these cohorts and you need to learn how to run a company how to grow finances how to position yourself how to even calculate your profit margin that was one of the things that i i teach and i i pond on do not do not under price your service not only you kill yourself but you hurt the market and a lot of times, small companies do that to get the contract, and then they disappear. That's correct. That is correct. I don't do that. Um, mm -hmm. I know what I'm worth. I know what the company is worth. Yes. Um, I would not overbid on a contract. Mm -hmm. I will stay within the margin. Be competitive. Be, have make sure we have a competitive bid at all times. Yes. And it's okay to say no and walk away from a contract. Yes. And yes. move on to the next. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> One of the things also that you get with the chamber is that we have a uh, class on contracts and contract clauses to protect yourself. And that was one of the clauses about, you know, uh, growing sometimes to be, to have a window to change your prices according to market prices, to market changes. 
And I'll tell you, because I had a really horrible experience, we got a contract for a golf course that was turned into a helicopter parking lot. And one of the things was to settle the ground, we had to buy what they call the settling disc. And each disc weights about 300 pounds, and we had to buy about 26. When we priced it was in 2018, when we got to that phase, was on 19, and the price of metal overnight went up 26%. And just like you say, some clients will work with you, so won't. Because the contract says that you will do this, and I didn't have a clause to protect myself. So it is very important that you guys, uh, the audience, that you take advantage of your membership benefits. Really dig in and look and see what's there because you can save yourself to have to get a lawyer. And you can get you a template contract where you can see the the clauses that you need to protect yourself. You really do, because I do know, for example, that some agencies here, especially in Florida, most of the businesses here, they close when we have hurricanes. Yes, they do. We do have an uh, act of God. That's what it should say on your contract, in your contract, That's on your cause <laughs> to protect you. Because God is the one who acted that. So you can't control it. So what if you have a catering company? What if you have a you know final cleaning job with the Marriott that is all glass? And we have a stall. What do you do? You have to stop working for about a week or two to the storm stops. Correct. But if you don't have that on your clause and your turning key day is on a due date. On the due date in You have to bring more manpower and in order to actually meet that deadline. But if you have that clause in your contract, do you be able to get an extension? Absolutely. And that's one of the things that we were teaching on that class. They always put at least fifteen working days. That is really three weeks. <laughs> you just you know, so just all of those little things that it takes. So, um, you know, to, to really sustain and to grow. So what would, what would you share with us as a strategy to grow your business? I know the one that you have used, what have been your strategy? Relationships, um, hard work, dedication, yes. sacrifice, as well as relationships and continue to build and grow those relationships. Yes. There is a saying that people work with the people they know, like, and trust. and trust. And one of the things, Max, that I have seen you through the years growing has been that you always bring a smaller company along with you. Yes. It didn't matter where you were. When you had 20, you brought somebody that were two people. When you were 60, you brought somebody that had eight to 10 people. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing to watch. I watch you through the years doing that. And I know that when you came with the chamber, I said, Max, I got a little one that I need you to back, take by the hand at the luncheon. And, and she told me that you guys connected. Yes, and I am, I'm really happy about that because I think that is actually the most effective way to grow from inside out as a human being, as a supporter to the community that you serve, but not only that as a company. Because if you have a pressure washing job that requires 20 people and you have 12, now you got somebody at eight. And that's a win-win. Doesn't matter how you look at it. And they get to learn also the, the, the other part, the administrative part of how to run it with 20 instead of just eight. You know, everybody wins. Everybody learns. Well, what do you, what do you got to say about that? I mean, um, <clears throat> building that relationship with the, with the gentlemen and the parties that you're referring to, um, I was a skeptical because of based on the relationship that you and I have and yeah. you just been directed to them. Um, we jumped in head on and mm -hmm. actually when the amateur was awarded the contract, I brought them in to as a subcontractor to do that file clean for myself mm -hmm. for the company. And um, yes, they did a little guidance and reassurance. Yes. I made sure my account manager was on site at all times, making sure that um, they found the scope of work and detail also with the client mm -hmm. and um, we make sure that we execute and get the job done. And they, they've been, they've been doing an excellent, excellent job. And you see, and everybody grows. Everybody grows. And I, I, I would definitely would like to use them in the next project moving forward. Yes. Then they called me and they told me, oh my God, thank you for that introduction to Max and You're both in good hands. You are both in good hands. And just like that, we got more coming along. And, uh, and I'll thank you. I, I really do thank you for just being open to that possibility because just like you said, you bring in somebody, you build in the relationship and you have to step in and guide them a little bit, you know, but it's just that you're part of actually somebody's success story. When you really look at the big picture, you're part of somebody's success story. So tell us any closing words and you feel free to share your heart, your heart on the things that have been like, I wish I knew if I would have known. Never sign a contract 
if you're not 100% sure if you're capable of doing it or not. Never, ever do that. Because I've done that once. In uh, it, hurts. it hurts. It hurts financially. It hurts the pocket. And um, you can't walk away. You have to fulfill the contract obligation, put the best foot forward, and get the job done. Yeah. And it's a lesson learned. And then you grow. It's growing pains. But you're able to pivot from there and grow and move on. And you know what to do next time. Yes. Yeah, so what I heard you say is read your contract, contract. at least. Three times, God. like I always say, and like he's like you said, sometimes it's I'm not there yet, or this contract is not suitable for me, or you know, it's it's not always a yes. It's not always a yes. my grandmother used to say every dollar, they sh it, it needs to be coin dollars. She said everything in China is not the sun, or you might find a dollar that costs you a million. And all business is not good business. <laughs> all business is not good business. That, that is so, so, so true. So I wanted to thank you. And I want you to please share again. Because if you guys need a final claim, that's not one of not the only big contract that you have. I do know that you guys also do stadiums. That is correct. I mean, I we remember. Do, we do pre and post construction cleaning at Raymond James Stadium. We provide um, staffing for events at Raymond James. Mm -hmm. um, again, janitor service at hospitals as well. Yes. Um, we provide staffing for that, um, airports, the school boards, um, banks, um, private sector. And one of the things that we're currently pivoting into is the government contract industry as well. Awesome. Awesome. I'm very, very glad to have you with us. You. When you, when I saw that document that says, uh, M MNG is, is, um, is applying to become a chamber member. I said, yes. Yes, they finally got to the right house. <laughs> but thank you. Well, would you please call if you have any questions, if you would like to hire their services, please feel free to call at 813-867-3550. Come to the chamber. Have fun with us. So glad to have you, Max. Thank you. Thank you.